go. My name is Piotr Dudkiewicz from Carter University, Department of Political Science, and I'm also involved in the Canada-Europe uh, uh, transatlantic project uh, of the Institute of uh, European Studies. Uh, I have a pleasure to host uh, Professor Grzegorz Gorzelak from Warsaw University, uh, who is a director of the Institute of Regional, European Regional and Local Studies. And uh, Professor Gorzelak uh, specializes in the uh, cohesion funds of European Union, among other things. And uh, I would like to ask him a few questions about the recent studies uh, they uh, conducted on the uh, aftermath of the uh, financial crisis in Europe. Professor Gorzelak. What was the depth of the financial crisis of 2008 2010 in Central and Eastern Europe? It was very differentiated because there were countries like the Baltic Republics, which uh, decreased their GDP by 20% and also witnessed a rise of unemployment up to 20%. And there were countries which uh, were affected by the crisis to a much lesser extent, and Poland all of a sudden was one of the, the only countries in, East, in Europe and the only country in Central Eastern Europe which had not noted any decline of GDP in none of the years until now, although what's going to happen in the future is still to be seen. So there is no one picture of uh, the crisis in Central Eastern Europe and it's very differentiated. Also like in the wider setting of European Union because there were countries which have been affected very strongly and the countries which uh, were able to almost defend themselves. As around the world, you know. China As around the world, world, yeah. Well, in fact, the crisis uh, was the crisis of the rich world, of the developed world, and uh, developing countries or the new industrialized crisis, uh, countries like China or India or uh, other Asian countries have not been affected by the crisis. Or what were the main factors that contributed to the depth of the crisis? Well, it's, uh, once again, very different in different countries because some of them, like the Baltic states, uh, have been developing very fast before the crisis and one could say too fast. So this was the reason of a kind of a, a balloon or a bubble which then burst uh, when the financial crisis emerged in other countries. So they were, for example, very much uh, affected by the financial crisis of, in the countries which were the owners of their banks. This was also the situation when, uh, when uh, the, they were, as they are saying themselves, they were caught in an upward spiral of optimism. Mm -hmm. So to some extent they resemble Iceland and Ireland. Too much of the investment, too much the, of the borrowing. Too much investment, too much borrowing, uh, and believe that the future would be much better than yesterday and today. Mm -hmm. In other cases, it was the crisis imported from the outside because uh, these are the, the export-oriented countries. So when there is a decline in uh, the part of Europe which uh, is buying their products and services, they have also a decline. Uh, in other countries, for example, Slovakia, very much uh, oriented towards industrial exports to Western Europe, mm -hmm. aff was affected by the crisis, Slovenia to the same extent. There were some also genuine problems, like in Hungary, which uh, lost financial stability even before the crisis, so the f uh, field of maneuvering during the crisis was much narrower for Hungary than for other countries. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is no unique pattern and uh, uh, when we were uh, analyzing the uh, crisis in Central Eastern Europe, we came to a conclusion that uh, the diversification of the reactions to the crisis is exactly the same as the, div the di diversification of Western European countries to the crisis. It's so once again, so there were Baltic republics mm -hmm. like Ireland and like Iceland. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hungary perhaps, well, with all uh, uh, like uh, Greece and so on. So that's uh, the, the white array uh, is not uh, uh, being cut along the east-west Europe. It's uh, array more due to structural characteristics of particular countries 
on both sides, east and west. What, what are the main policy prescriptions from that picture? Very different, once again. In some countries, austerity measures were introduced. In some countries, on the contrary, more spending was introduced. So once again, it depended on the policy or kind of uh, 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 implementation of both strategies. So on one side, costly measures, cutting social spending. On the other side, more spending, for example, for infrastructure. And in uh, several countries, cohesion money was uh, a factor which alleviated uh, the situation, the, 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 the problem, because uh, this was an extra demand. So financial uh, uh, difficulties were, to some extent, uh, uh, cautioned by cohesion money coming to So the there's no one model of getting no one out model. of the crisis? No one model of uh, the reasons of the crisis, the causes of the crisis, no one model of uh, going through the crisis, and no one model of policies. So we can say that Central Europe diversified, and it's... More Central or less Europe looks diversified like, like in, a, Europe. in a very similar way as the whole of Europe diversified, and and no one can say that there is east-west divide in Europe uh, in relation to the causes, uh, process, and policies of the crisis. And to some extent, when we are now looking at performance of Central Eastern Europe countries, it's in very many cases much better than performance of Western European countries, and definitely much better than performance of Southern European countries. So none of the new member states is following the example of Greece or Spain or Portugal or Southern Italy. I mean, uh, stability, financial stability is much better. Growth is higher. Uh, exports are once again growing. And uh, uh, unemployment is below uh, or a approximately around the average of the European Union. In none of the countries, the countries there is such a high unemployment as in Greece and Spain. So they seem to be more resistant and they seem to be uh, perhaps uh, more prone to uh, accepting sacrifices of the crisis, which were, uh, were experienced by many nations in Central Eastern Europe, but perhaps we are a bit more humble to to get accustomed to them and work uh, for good, the future. That's a good conclusion of our conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.